Because if you go on this side, you ruin the dish. <laughs> Very important. Okay, now that I've got your attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, for five, ten days, we'll be quiet. Something's going on here because there's no. Very fresh. I catch it last night in Mykonos. In the meantime, the captain was taking the, the anchor up. I've been fishing. <laughs> He's in fishing. Fresh. From Greece. If Captain Sigali heard you. No, he's my friend. He's, yeah, a, no, he's a really good guy. Believe me, it's a pleasure to be on board with him. It's really a pleasure. Yeah. Brownie points. Look how many things you have here. Well, I haven't started cooking yet because I'm a professional. Believe? <laughs> okay, it's a hot pan once again. Well, obviously not very hot. <laughs> <laughs> some chopped shallots, two garlic cloves, some basil leaves. <laughs> Very important. Cognac, pure cognac, $2.50 Costco. <laughs> <laughs> now we have so, something very, very, very important. Listen, I need to do the demonstration. I'm You're going... interfering. No, no, I'm creating. <laughs> Really, really difficult, right? <laughs> One shrimp. Take it away, take it away. Leave it there. <laughs> Can you help me with that? Uh, Don't bring it yet. It's fire. You see how dangerous it is? It's not for... Very dangerous. Be very careful when you do this. It's only because for, uh, if you are not careful, if you are not careful, yeah. something can happen. Yeah. Okay, so in a frying pan, I'm making a basic tomato sauce. You can end up like him. <laughs> This was last cruise. Pew, in one second. <laughs> they will fall out with you. All right. Stay here. Very important. So basic tomato sauce. I've put in celery, shallots, carrots, some basil leaves, and two cloves of garlic. And I just sweat that off. Okay. Only professionals can do that. So, we just leave that to saute a little. So now we're ready for the next stage, which is some tomato paste. Tomato paste? Or tomato paste, if you don't understand. Tomato, tomato. Tomato. Tomato paste. Tomato. You don't need it. I need it. And then we just mix that around into the vegetable. <laughs> you see it? Yeah, very important the quantity. <laughs> it can change the flavor. <laughs> very important the quantity. Where is it? Right there. <laughs> oh, let's see. You understand now why I'm so happy he's leaving to me. The end of this cruise. Voilà. <laughs> some fresh chopped tomatoes. Some chopped tomato. How many tomatoes do you have? You put already four kinds of tomato. Shut up. And this? Some more chopped tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now they're very... No, 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 my... <laughs> nice presentation. The creation is not easy, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, you need to be very careful the way you... <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> what are you doing? Make sure you don't put the bay leaf in the plate because there's nothing to do with that. Oh my word. Then. <laughs> it's hard working with him. Can you see it? 
I put the beer and draw this slowly. Very careful when you do this. All the, all the tomato is in. I'm adding a little bit of tomato juice into that just to render and cook down. <laughs> I forgot. Yes, <laughs> You like it? <laughs> I do like the put Pavarotti with it. <laughs> now, you can also change the decoration if you want. Or better, you can just move the plate. <laughs> please, recognize, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> You can also take, you see why it's nice to cook? Because you can also take something from another dish. <laughs> it's just, it just, ah. Okay, so let me try and talk about the tomato sauce. Are you finished playing? No, I'm checking. Huh? <laughs> okay, so the tomato sauce now, what I've done, what I've added is, is tomato juice into the actual sauce to render it down and give it a nice taste. I put a bay leaf into it, I put a sprig of uh, thyme into that, and I put some oregano, some dried oregano. Oregano, no oregano, oregano. Whatever, that hurt. Well, I and then I'm gonna, add in, you. I'm gonna add in a little bit of white wine, because it's Italian. Every but, night when you go in his office, he says to me, I'm now brown cow. <laughs> I'm teaching him, he's teaching me English, he says. No, it's not possible. Me, I'm teaching you Italian. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you how that goes, okay, it's very easy. In, in, in uh, America and in, in England, we use a concise Oxford dictionary to communicate to everybody because it's full of words. Well, in Italy, they don't have a dictionary, they have a book of hand signals. <laughs> Everything's... Uh... And you can see it's learning very well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been studying for a while. <laughs> Listen, I give you one napkin, okay? Huh? That's it, only one. Yeah, one. All right. So at this stage now, we turn down the heat in the in the tomato sauce and we let the tomato sauce reduce. And now that's an important part of the cooking process. We do this on board a lot as well. I'm I'm being serious now. You need to be serious for two minutes. <laughs> it's impossible for you, I know. But. The reason why we reduce a, a sauce is to strengthen the flavor and the color, okay? Form a reduction. So as the steam is rising there, the liquid is cooking out of the sauce, right? Many times that you've made tomato sauce at home, you've put it on top of something, what happens is the sauce sits on, on, on top of the shrimp and the liquid runs to the side of the plate or the rim of the plate. That's because you haven't rendered it down, you haven't reduced the sauce running. to get rid of the steam, okay? So that's what's, that's what's taking place now. The other half of the dish, I'm going to do in this pan, and I'm going to start that now as well. Okay. And you'll note that I haven't seasoned the, uh, huh? Stop it, is this stop yours or mine? It's mine. Right. Okay. So, you will note that I haven't seasoned the dish, okay, the tomato sauce. I haven't put any salt and pepper in that. And that is, that is due to the fact that, like I've just said, when you reduce something down, it strengthens in flavor. So if I was to salt it in the beginning, it becomes very salty at the end, and then I've got to throw it away and start all over again. I can't fix it. So it's better to reduce down, and once you're at that stage where you're happy with the sauce, the thickness of the sauce, that is when you flavor it with salt and pepper. Or, quite often, you forget. Okay. So the second part of this dish is to saute the shrimps, and rightfully so, we're going to flambe. Well, I'm going to show you how to flambe properly. Where's the lighter? Uh -huh. Well, you stand here, you like the lighter, no. you like you. Huh? What? No way, you <laughs> So the first thing to do is to put the shirts in a hot pan. And more importantly, it's at this time now, we want to get a nice caramelization on the side of the shrimp. Instead of getting it, making it look anemic and white. You want a nice color. No, no, no. Just worried about you don't Mine get uh, slashed in. Reddish. Huh? 
So we, we don't move the pan around. The more you lift the pan away from the heat, the, 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 the pan starts to get cold. And what happens is the shrimp or whatever you're cooking in the pan starts to, re to release its juice in, into, the, into the cold pan. And what happens to that is it boils. Instead of searing or, or frying, it actually boils in its own juice and becomes tough. So leave them alone. We like to get a nice caramelization. I don't mean throw sugar into the pan and caramelize it. What I'm talking about is a nice crispy outer skin on the shrimp. Okay? So now, seafood, very clever thing. Seafood, it will tell you when it's cooked. You know, it doesn't stay in the pan and go, I'm cooked. It changes color, doesn't it? I don't need a fork. You need it for your creation. So the shrimp was, uh, was white, translucent, and now it becomes pink or an orange color when it's ready to be cooked. So we just simply flip them over, and you can see what I'm talking about. It's got a nice caramelization, a nice color to it. It looks much better than the pink shrimp that Fabio cooked earlier. So this time now we come to flambe, and like he said, it's a very, it's a very tricky thing to do, flambe. And when you flambe, a good tip is if you're going to try it at home, Give your neighbor a call and try it at their house first. <laughs> in case it goes pear shape. Okay? So, quick, one, two, three. In goes the brandy. Here comes the plate. Whoa. Whoa. Okay? <laughs> 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 Is that rose petals fire? <laughs> Oh, oh, the smoke detector's gone off. <laughs> that is dozen. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Now, when you flambe, the only reason why we actually flambe is because it's to take the bitterness out of the alcohol. You don't want the bitterness. You want the flavor of brandy, but you don't want the bitterness of the alcohol. That's the only reason why we light it up. Okay? So, it's at this point now that the shrimp is already cooked, and you can see that uh, we add the shrimp to the actual sauce. Boom! And all the brandy. Now, because it's called Gambarini Fra Diablo, it has an element, another element of, of the dish that is called the Diablo, which means, or translates to devil star. Devil star meaning it's a little bit spicier, a little bit hot. Now this is where Remember I told you that me and Fabio meet every morning and this is going to be Fabio's lunch today. So this is where the chef always has the power over the maitre d', the advantage. Because yeah, it's your lunch and because every morning that we meet, you upset me, you always upset me. No, we have not, the power to rectify that. This is Fabio's lunch, he upset me this morning. <laughs> I saw he's, he's going to eat it. All red pepper. Now, <laughs> you can do another thing and you can come back here tomorrow morning and watch Fabio do his own, his own version of Elton John's I'm a Rocket Man. <laughs> <laughs> we were fine. <laughs> okay, <so. laughs> Coming to the end of the dish. A <laughs> little bit of pepper. Oh, we, need, we don't need that really. And a little bit of salt just to finish off the dish. And because you are the bodyguard of Fabio, you can taste it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I know it's was, was, was going to be easy. He was, like, he was walking the straight <laughs> way. Right? I know what's going through your head. You said that you thought I started this dish as an Italian dish and it's now turned into a Mexican dish. <laughs> right? Okay, so on the plate, and we talk about the plate, you see the little symbol of rice. How do we get that? We send the steamed rice, the plate down to the engineers, they create that for us. No, we just press the rice into a mold, we tap it out onto the plate, we put some blanched vegetables as, as, a, as a garnish, and then we dish up the shrimp onto the plate, and a normal portion is around six pieces. It's, it's up to you if you want it eight or nine or ten pieces. You can see it's nice and fiery hot. And there, there we go. That's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's very convincing something. <laughs> just put that over there. No. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Why are you spoiled it? No, it's nice. 
Ja, det var en Ja, precis. Jag var lite lite... Jag var lite 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 creation. Hur är det så? This is Pinky. <laughs> Let me take the cow. It's a little heavy. <laughs> uh, this is the cow. Oh, no, look, it looks like a pig. Eh? But <laughs> it dresses up in this way to don't scare the little one. It's a cow. It's a cow. Look, they always play together. Look. They always play together. Very cute. Every day. See, every day Mario is in charge. We have a Luisa and Lucia, the two cows. One is for the skin milk and one for the regular milk. You can imagine with 4,000 passengers on board with a lot of milk. <laughs> and a lot of eggs. I don't understand how they do the chicken to put this pink writing on the egg to say when it's expiring, but anyway. <laughs> Okay, obviously on board we use fresh eggs. <laughs> on fresh. <laughs> no, on board we use fresh eggs. Well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell you where the egg comes from. I leave it to your imagination. Okay, <laughs> it comes from the chicken, man. <laughs> so they can be dangerous uh, fresh eggs. They can carry a disease called Salmon. salmonella, which can be fatal. So we actually buy and use uh, um, pasteurized no. eggs. Okay, we take the chicken, we put it in the freezer, and we pasteurize it. <laughs> <laughs> they do the eggs already pasteurized. Do. Please go home. Go home. <laughs> Pasteurization means that the that the egg is washed in a warm water bath on a on a conveyor belt, pops up on the other side, they spray a fine form of wax over the egg to protect it from any diseases, picking up any diseases. And that's what's pasteurization. Uh -huh. In actual fact on board the Royal Princess we only use these eggs for frying and for poaching. That's the only thing that we use a fresh egg for. Everything else we use a frozen frozen egg. So frozen egg yolk, frozen egg white, or whole frozen egg, or egg beater, which most Americans should know what that is, egg, egg beater, for omelets, right? Yeah. So in this dessert, I'm going to start off and I'm going to use frozen egg yolk, which has been defrosted, so it's not frozen. Okay. So for the rest of the... How many egg yolk? Uh, four. One. One. Two. Three, four, five. Four. Four. So four, four frozen eggs and have another Excellent. spoon. Sugar. One, two, three, four. So four eggs. Four eggs, four spoons of sugar. For how many tiramisu? Huh? For how many tiramisu? Huh? How many tiramisu you do with this? Four eggs and four sugars. Four. Sugar. Four. Four. So four two. <laughs> no, four eggs, four spoons of sugar for two people. For, ah, okay, for two people. Alright, all right. so all you're doing here is you're mixing in the. Faster, please. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay can you slow me down? Because it's actually. It's painful. No? <laughs> Alright, what you're doing is you're just breaking down the sugar granules in the egg yolks and you mix it up. There you go. And into that we have, I need to know it's the right thing. Yeah, it's got bone. Into that we put the four spoons of mustard. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 calories. Now, <laughs> <laughs> when you use mascarpone cheese, take it out of the refrigerator 20 minutes or 30 minutes before so it becomes yeah. room temperature and it becomes soft and pliable room temperature because it's easier to whisk in as you can see I don't know we have TV so you can see it whisks in very easily if, it, if you use it straight from the refrigerator it becomes lumpy now 
Turkish translates to pick me up. Pick me up. Yeah. No, no, cannot. You're way into it, everyone. <laughs> so, pick me up. It's supposed to translate to light and fluffy. That's what we want to try and create here. Because this mixture is heavy, the egg yolk, the sugar, and the mascarpone cheese is heavy, to, to add lightness and fluffiness to this dish, we're going to add in whipped cream. Now, whipped cream, all whipped cream is, is it's been aerated. It's got air bubbles in it. That's why it becomes light and fluffy. Now, it's at this point that you don't use the whisk anymore. So we need to get rid of the whisk because if you do use a whisk, what will happen? Take the air you up. break down the aeration of the cream and it becomes heavy. So we use a spatula. Fold. So all we do is fold in the cream into the egg mixture. What are you doing? What's the uh, This whole kind of very serious and quiet. <laughs> yeah. They're very curious to see what you're doing. So I'll tell you a little, a little joke about it. A, a good friend that I know. I actually, I, I know a very good chef in America called Bert Coutinho. And he's from Monterey in, uh, in California. He's got a restaurant there called the Sardine Factory. He's a very good chef as well. So if you're from America and you go, or you're going there, try out these restaurants, it's really good. But the reason why I'm telling you is because a sardine is a very, very intelligent fish. Did you know that? No. A sardine's the only fish that I know that locks itself in the can and leaves the key outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use a martini glass to build the dessert up if you're at home and you were doing this dessert for yourself at home, you could use a martini glass. However, I will, the bar won't let me use martini glasses, otherwise you wouldn't have something to drink your martini out of. But we're ready to the second stage of the dessert. And what I've done in the glass, as you can see on TV, if it is on TV, I've used a puppy bag with soft chocolate and I've just literally put a pattern onto the glass. Now, the reason why I've done that, I know you can see nothing there, but as you can see on that, the white, mixture shows off the chocolate design on the, on the base of the glass and your guests go wow that's wow. impressive that's not really anyway so into the glass into the bottom of the glass we put a little bit of the mixture oh you can do what i did this morning Look. can you not show them that that's not part of the show that's this part. i did that this morning <laughs> so <laughs> you're not in the dining room with your waiters mate you see? Thank you. Thank you. Or uh, Ruby. Or Ruby. Oh, I did another one. Yeah. Thank you. Finished now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I put some mixture into the bottom of the glass. Tap the glass down to get it level. Ah, ah. Doesn't like, it doesn't like the knife. <laughs> okay, finish. So now I'm going to build the dessert up with sponge. The sponge is very easy to, to make as well. This is just whole egg, sugar, and, and flour. You beat the hell out of it until it volumizes, and then you put it into sheet pans and you bake it and you cut it out into the shape that you want. So and I dip that into espresso coffee, yes. with, normally with alcohol in it, you'd use a Mas masala, masala wine. Masala wine. You use whatever you like. Masala wine. <laughs> All right, so use masala wine. So, a little bit more mixture on the top. A bigger piece of sponge, because we're now at the top of the glass. Just dip that into the espresso. Uh, and then we finish off the dessert just by topping it off. And then just smoothing it out. And it's at this point now that I would refrigerate this. I'll put this back into the refrigerator. Can you wait? I want to wait. It's at this point that you put it back in the refrigerator for uh, to allow it to coagulate or come back together again. Right? 
and then we take it out and we finish the actual dessert. Once it's, uh, once it's reset itself, we put cocoa powder over the top of it, like that, just like that. We put a little strawberry or whatever you're going to put in, a uh, sprig of mint. And this, unbelievably, is called uh, Samyadi, you know? Yeah. And Samyadi is uh, commonly known to us as a lady's finger. <laughs> well, if that's the lady's finger, I don't want to eat the rest of it. <laughs> anyway, we could put that in there. If you actually make tourists in Italy with Samyadi, they use that instead of sponge. And a little chocolate, uh, chocolate design. There you go. That's it. Bravo. Now, this is one that uh, my pastry chef made earlier. And this is also one that the pastry chef made earlier. Log Fabio. No, I teach the pastry chef. And as you can see, if it's set, it doesn't, it doesn't fall out. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but it doesn't fall out. But if I turn that over, it would. Okay, so when we do this for you and for the crew, we actually do it in huge sheet pans, and then we cut it out into the shapes that we want. We garnish the plate, and we put the tiramisu on there, and that's how we do that. Thank you very much. Wow. Last song. This is, we wrote it two days ago. Last night. <laughs> this is the brand new. Good morning, hello, and welcome. How are you doing? How do you like the show? This morning, we will do our best to entertain you. We will give you a small or short song like this gentleman next to my guy. <laughs> but before that, in behalf of the whole dining room department, Headed by the only one good looking major D. Thank you, bravo, bravo. <laughs> Promotion. And from the Gali department, the only one good looking executive chef. <laughs> Wants to say thank you, Phillips, and every one of you for choosing Royal Princess on your holiday. Are you enjoying your holiday so far? Okay, now we will get a serious wipe a little bit. Upon returning home, you will receive an email. And on that email, to evaluate your holiday. On that email, your waiter and junior waiter represent number seven. Are you happy with your junior waiter and the waiters? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you said so, put it in writing. We are not pushing you. We are just asking you very, very kindly. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Princess Marachi.
Bravissimi. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, now we will escort inside the galley of deck six. And we have uh, Erminio, deck seven. And we have the guys here, Emiliano and Riri.